Hello YouTube, it's Detroit Borg and today I'm going to show you what I think is the best way to control your Mac Mini home theater or basically any home theater PC. It's called Mobile Mouse and it is an app for the iPad. It's $2.99 in the App Store. And basically the app allows you to control the keyboard and mouse functions on your computer. This works with a Mac or a PC and the app essentially works with a server that's running on those computers. So all you have to do is purchase the app for $2.99 in the App Store and install a free server on either your Windows or Mac PC. Now before I move over to my home theater, let me just show you around the app. I'm going to launch it right here. It's called Mobile Mouse. There is a version for the iPhone and iPod Touch. So let's orientate this. Now as you can see it works in either landscape or portrait mode. Okay, now what you see here is basically a giant trackpad. So I have a multi-touch surface. You, you can see, see the highlight of my finger tracing around right now. It is multi-touch, so I can use two fingers at a time. I can't use three or four like you can with a trackpad on a MacBook. I have two computers on my home network right now using the server. So it's connected to the default, which is my iMac. So all I have to do is go up here and I can see my two computers that are on right now on my network running the server. Now uh, I want to go to Mac Mini, so I'm going to select my Mac Mini. It's connected. Simple as that. Now of course it does have to be on the local Wi-Fi network. You can't use this over 3G of course. Now let me just do a tour of the app. Up here in this corner right here is a little green dot which indicates the status. It's telling me it's connected. Up here, as I pointed out earlier, is some of the server options. So again, you can select your server or you can enter in an IP address. You can go to other options and you can go to support. I'm not going to go through those details right now. Up here we have two icons. We have the music icon and a web icon. Now this icon brings up the media control. So depending on what media app you're using, this will allow you to control it. So you have the ubiquitous play, pause, frontwards, backwards, up, down, menu, eject, volume up, etc. And here we have the web controls and th this happens to be Safari. So you see a plus minus sign which is zoom in and out, stop, refresh, back, search, home, forward, favorites, web address, new tab or new window. And you can just tap to hide it again. And here is the keyboard. And the keyboard is fully featured. Of course it will be unique to whatever platform you're using. And this is a Mac, so I have some Mac unique features here. I can see the command option control keys. And of course you have the standard keyboard and you can cycle between the other options of the keyboard. Up here you have all the other options you normally don't see with your keyboard because you're controlling a full Mac at this point. So we have the F keys and other function keys. We also have these hot keys which are programmable so you can, con you can program a macro to run a program. So in this case I have desktop. So uh, in order to see my desktop I just click this key instead of hitting command uh, F4. Of course you can just tap that to hide the keyboard. Now on this trackpad you also see these controls or these uh, left click or, and right click buttons. So if you click this you, you hear a, a virtual clicking sound. So you don't have to use these controls. You can hit, you can tap one for left click or double tap for right click. You can also use two fingers to scroll and you can pinch to zoom. We can also see a virtual dock in the bottom. These are all the programs running on my Mac Mini right now. So if I want to launch any of these, all I have to do is roll my finger over one of them. So let's say I want to launch my email. I just tap my email. It's telling me mail has opened up. If I look at my home theater and I see my mail app is there. Now if I want to quit that, all I have to do is hit Command Q. And of course I can see that mail has just quit on my Mac Mini. So now you've seen a basic tour of the app. Let's go ahead and bring it to the Mac Mini and use it. Okay, now I'm in front of my Mac Mini home theater. Unfortunately I'm getting some distortion on this camera. I'm not sure why. Uh, but let's go ahead and do the demo anyway. So here I have my iPad and you can see I have the app running. And if you look closely you can see that the icons down here, all the programs in the dock on the app, are also all the icons on the Mac Mini. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the app itself and let's tap the music button. As soon as I tap the music button, the media controls appear and iTunes automatically launches. This will also happen if I touch the web button. So if I click web, Safari automatically launches. And of course the control panel now is the browser functions. 
So up here I have the zoom in button. So if I zoom in, I can see my text is getting larger or smaller. So that's very useful. Of course, we have the other standard controls, stop, refresh, back. I haven't done anything to go back yet, but search. So automatically my cursor goes to my search bar right there. And if I hit the keyboard, I can type in a search. So let's do Apple. Return. Of course, I get all my hits on Apple. I can hit my home button, which will take me to the Apple page. My favorites, so my bookmarks will appear. And if you select the World Wide Web button, it'll automatically take you to your address bar. So there you can enter in your address. So let's go to CNN.com. Of course, I have .com already. It's smart enough to know that I'm in my address bar. And hit enter. I also have the controls for new tab. So new tab will open up and new window. So a new window will open up. Now let's go ahead and use the trackpad on here. Again, this works in landscape or portrait mode. In this case, I'm just going to use the landscape mode. So you can see again my finger moving around. You can see the cursor on the screen moving around. Now if I go to Safari, all I have to do is use two fingers to scroll. Or I can go to the side where there's this little ridged indicator which allows me to scroll right there. So it's kind of like a virtual scroll pad. Another fantastic feature about this app is that it recognizes pinch to zoom. So if you pinch, you can zoom in. So it's just like using the control scroll to zoom in on your Mac. So that's web browsing with the Air Mouse app. So let's go back to iTunes. Once again, I'm just going to tap the music key. That'll bring up iTunes. That's where I left off with the movie. So you can see Star Trek right here. It's paused right now. So all I have to do if I want to play is tap the play button and it will play. I can also increase the volume or decrease the volume. Now, curiously, some controls don't work and I'm not sure why. Maybe it uh, iTunes doesn't work very well with it, but other media players may work with it. So for example, the full screen button doesn't do anything. The visualizer doesn't do anything. So not all of the media controls work as expected. So that's kind of a disappointment. But of course you can control it in other ways. So I can go ahead and bring up the keyboard. If I want full screen mode, I just hit Command F. So that brings in full screen. Of course I can launch apps right from the dock here. So all I have to do is go down to the dock. And let's say I want to launch my mail app. All I have to do is launch mail. And my mail app is loading. If I want to quit it, like once again, I go to Command Q. And of course, I could also use the mouse control and go over to the app and close it that way. So, as you can imagine, this allows you to control a Mac Mini without the need for a separate keyboard or a mouse using an iPad, which you probably have with you in your living room, or you can use the iPhone or iPod Touch app, which is what I have been using until I got the iPad. Works very well. In fact, it may be more convenient to use, but if you want to do more typing or more heavy duty typing, this is probably better because you get a larger keyboard and you get some uh, more surface area to work with on the trackpad. So once again, that's Detroit Bohr with a demonstration of the AirMouse app for your iPad. Thanks for watching.